Hey everybody, how are you tubers? This is Nikki J with the N Word, and I am coming to you today to talk about the snitching culture. As we all know, 6 9 just came home not too long ago. And that's fine. But the controversy behind him coming home is the fact that he snitched on his boys. That were never his boys. But that's another subject. Um, This whole culture of ratting and telling and snitching each other out, it 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 it's it's horrible um when you go into the streets there's a certain code that you're supposed to go by and ratting only extends its hand out to the street world okay it's not for your regular everyday like i'm not a rat if i go to i'm i'm a citizen okay i've been in positions where, per se, the actions that I carried at that time, had I gotten caught, I'd either be a rider or a rat. But I never got caught, okay? So, I don't even, you know, think about that. But what I do think about is the fact that we, as a people, find it okay to snitch on somebody because you got in trouble. Now, the only time I'm going to take that case is if I have something in your car with me or a gun on me. If we're riding and you get stopped and you got bricks in your car, I'm not taking those bricks. Those aren't my bricks. I'm not going to make a dollar off those bricks. They're yours. Um, I'm not taking it. And if you don't take it, that's fucked up because you're not 100. You're not, not even 100. Um, you're not about that life. Okay. You already know what come with the game. Okay. We've had movies. We have aunts, uncles, cousins, fathers, grandfathers like must i continue since the drug came game has hit us in the united states we have all had some kind of a mother a father a grandmother a aunt like is the, the game not even specifically for one type of person or one sex um but when you hit the game there is a code that you live. Like, everybody has a code of ethics. Okay, let's get that. Let's state that now. Everybody has a code of ethics. Um, When you get into the streets, you live by that code. Because that is what you chose. That was your choice. Your choice was to become a street person. Okay? You have two types of street people. You have... The, I want to say G'd up or the OGs. Yeah, the real OGs. Um, you become an OG when you <laughs> you get old and you did right by the streets. And you have rats. Those are the only two people. Two types in the streets. The real niggas or the real G's, the real brothers. I don't want to say the N-word. I don't want to get cursed out. But the real brothers and the rats. And nobody wants to be a rat until you're a rat. That's just what it is. You know, nobody goes into the saying, I'm going to be a rat. I'm ratting on my team. Well, I'm not going to say nobody. It might be a few of y'all out there that knew you were going to rat. But I, I'm i not, you know, I'm just going to give y'all the benefit of the doubt. Nobody came into this game and said, oh, I'm in it to rat. They came into the game to make money, to live a better way of life. But with money comes problems and those problems can cost you your life physically spiritually and mentally physically death or locked up spiritually you lose faith and hope and mentally 
some of y'all go crazy because you become drug addicts. You become the very thing that <laughs> gave you money. The very thing that you sat there and talked about with your home. Yeah, look at that crackhead over there. Oh, you know I'm saying this nigga owe me money. You become that. So that's why I say mind, body, and soul. Okay? Or mind, soul, and body. However you want to put it, those three things get lost. There are very, very few people that make it out the streets with their mind, body, and soul. At some point, your mind was taken, your body was taken, and your soul was temporarily put on hold. And I say temporarily put on hold because there are just some things that you can't do and have a soul at that moment. Like you can't sell your mom crack and be a spiritual anything. You can't sell your grandma. Like to me, that's the devil. Like, you know, they say the greatest gay, uh, hoax that the devil pulled was to um, fake the world into... Him not existing. I didn't get it verbatim. But that's it. And so, if you can live with God in you, why can't you live with the devil? Um. So, yeah. Once you go into um, selling these drugs, you kind of lose sight of your soul. Because um, a good person could never see another person, good, bad, or indifferent, hurt. Unless they were trying to hurt them or somebody in their family or, you know, just hurt somebody. You just don't go into this just knowingly hurting people. And we all have seen from time and time again movies, songs, and family members that these things hurt families. They tear them apart. They have married mothers selling their daughters, um, fathers selling their wives and their daughters and their selves, niggas sucking dick, bitches sucking dick, all types of shit. All, brothers, I'm used to the N-word. I've used it for so many years, so don't castrate me. I'm just speaking in my terms. But I've seen people do some of the ugliest things for a rock for a couple of snorts or a ping of some coke or heroin like heroin is the worst heroin is like how can I put this it's like um it's like another it's like a deity if you will or a spirit itself it like inhabits and takes over anything that it comes in contact with. Or any person that it comes in contact with. Um, and when you get into the streets, you have to know the code of ethics. You have to know how to play the game. If you don't, you become a rat. Or a rat. Is <laughs> that's all you can say? And then, like they had this movie last year, White Mike, and you know everybody they hyped that shit up, and people was going to spend money. This I'm not spending my money to fucking see a rat. Why would I support that dumbass shit? You can go on YouTube and find anything you want. Anything I went on there. That's how I actually found out. You know his dad was a fed. He was a fed. Because I'm like, let me go look up this white mic guy. That's what I said. I'm like, you know, everybody's excited about this new movie coming out. And I was just like, mm. white boy playing black. Eh. Mm. Not that you don't have people out there that are white, that have their natural charisma about them. And, you know, the the, the VIPs, if you will. We all have things in common. We're all beings. So I'm not getting caught up on the white 
and black in a sense of race. I'm getting caught up on the white and black in the sense of conduction. How you conduct yourself. White drug dealers don't conduct themselves like blacks. The only time you see a white man conducting himself as a black person is if they grew up in the black family or black community. Because there are black white people out here or white people that have you know our cultural backing background and things of that nature so yes you know those aren't the ones i'm talking about white mike wasn't one of those he wasn't go look him up he was a pawn in the drug game and you know, pawns are some of the most <laughs> valued players of the game because they can change how the board is going to move. And that's what he did. He took a move. Um, he took himself out of the hands of the federal government and moved on his own. In a game of chess, that's just unacceptable. So why would it be acceptable in life, even though life is played like the game of chess, if you look at the board and the way shit is set up, just whatever. But those rules didn't um, exist in the game or outside the game. And I'll tell you why. Because when the federal government found out that he had cut his ties, they went after him like they go after every other drug uh, drug dealer. And when they caught him, they treated him like he had done something so bad. Like the like White Mike shouldn't even be locked up right now. If White Mike did what he was supposed to, White Mike would not have even ever gotten locked up. White Mike was getting money from the feds and from the streets. Okay? When I saw this movie and I saw that they made, like... Because I at first I'm like, who the fuck is White Mike? Like, what is this shit about? They don't tell you it's about the culture of snitching. They don't tell you it's about a fucking rat. They, you know what I'm saying? He had the drug game on lock, which he did. But he did that with the help of the federal government. They gave him all the players he needed. They funded him with all the money that he needed. He, at the age of 15, this man had an ID that said 21. They changed his identity every time he went somewhere different to fuck with somebody. I just want y'all to know. It ain't right. If you do something, you stand up for accountability. We need to start upholding accountability. Okay? That's what is being dismissed. If you pay attention, nobody is being held accountable for their actions. The government, the people in play that they use, the drug dealers usually catch the accountability for everything else or for everyone else, should I say. Everything that they put in plan and plot And all of them. Go look up the war on drugs. Go look up Rick Ross. The real Rick Ross, okay? Rick Ross was locked up behind Bush and a couple of other CIA agents. Yeah, he was. Go look it up. And, oh... Another guy that was in, you remember the guy from America's Most Wanted? He's up in there, a couple federal drug, like, yeah, these people became prominent people, but they were drug dealers too. And the only person that took the fall, Rick Ross. And all he was doing was 
looking out for the man that came and told him that and told Rick Ross that he was going to look out for him. That's it. Rick Ross ain't do nothing more, nothing less, but get money and look out for the people that said they had his best interests at heart, which can never be the case when you're in the streets because the streets don't give a fuck about nobody. They're the streets. How can the street? They have no soul. There, that the streets is a soulless alley. Okay. And I just want us to understand what's going on. Snitching is not okay. Six nine is not okay for what he did. Okay. It's not thorough. You guys are supporting this shit. Y'all watching his but I can't watch. I don't deal with snitches. I can't watch that shit. I couldn't even snitch on my, my sisters. Snitches get stitches where I come from. Okay? So, um, nah. I'm not with the snitching shit. Six, nine. I just want to tell you something, my man. You're not thorough. You got into these streets on your own. You did what you wanted to do. Okay? Yeah, they was, they, whatever y'all went through, that is not an excuse for you to rat on people to save your own ass. Okay? You involved yourself with certain aspects of the street that you shouldn't have because you're a house boy. You're a house nigga. You ain't a field nigga. You a house nigga. Okay? And that's how they used you. Learned the people around you. Learn. I sound like I put a D on it. Learn the people and their habits around you. And you might be able to watch your ass a little more. Maybe if you weren't so fake, you wouldn't have had such fake friends. We need to start thinking about that too. Because real only recognize what? Real. I know that. I ain't even a street person. Like I said, when I started this video, I am a civilian. I have dibbled and dabbled into street things. I am a civilian. Okay? I'll take a murder for myself. I'm not taking a murder for you. Unless this is something we had understood. Before we went into this murder. Now, if we have something, you know, you get taken, I ride for you, you ride for me, however that go. All day. I get stopped with bricks in my car. They're my bricks. Okay? The first game to the streets is put up fucking lawyer money, dickheads. None of y'all is loyal. To yourselves, let alone somebody the fuck else. How you gonna be loyal to somebody and you lie to yourself? Y'all got yourself boasted up and thinking that y'all tough. Six nine, you one of them niggas that played PlayStation all day. And you thought outside was PlayStation, but when you got out here, you wasn't ready. You was stationary. You a piece of paper to a page in my rhyme book. That's what you was. You wasn't nothing. You could have did. You you would have did better just rapping about the shit your homies did. And if your homies was real, you the go getter. They gonna tell you no, nah, chill. Go get the money. Just make sure I got money on my books. That's when a motherfucker care about you. Because you the breadwinner. You the one making all that money. But see, you wasn't with nobody that gave a fuck, Treyway. And you still crank claiming you is a fucking gangbanger. Nigga. Wigga. Puerto Rican, whatever the fuck you is. Nah. Mm-mm. 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 Stop it. Stop it. You're nothing. You're a rat. Once you become a rat, you're a rat.